Passive cooling. Passive cooling is a method of cooling a system or a space without the use of active mechanical systems, such as air conditioners or fans. Instead, it relies on natural processes, design strategies, and materials to dissipate heat and maintain a comfortable temperature. The goal is to enhance the natural flow of heat, allowing it to move away from a space or system, thereby reducing the need for external energy sources. Important of passive cooling. Passive cooling is the least expensive and most sustainable way of cooling the home, especially considering the environment. We can achieve a comfortable indoor environment by designing or modifying our house. As we all know, climate changes these days have created so much discomfort for the inhabitants that passive cooling is becoming increasingly important. Climate change increases the average temperatures, making it difficult for us because of heat waves, hot air, and other things. By introducing passive cooling, we can tackle all these things. Importance of passive cooling. One, it reduces the overall energy consumption of the house. Two, it is a cost-effective method or technique. Three, it is a sustainable way. Four, it improves indoor air quality. Five, it provides a better and more comfortable indoor environment. Techniques of passive cooling. Passive cooling techniques utilize natural processes, design strategies, and materials to cool a space without the need for active mechanical systems. Here are some common passive cooling techniques. Orientation and form. The orientation and form of a building play crucial roles in architectural design, affecting energy efficiency, natural lighting, ventilation, and overall functionality. Siding, Form and orientation are the most important passive design techniques for reducing the energy consumption of the building and enhancing the thermal comfort of the occupants in the building. Orienting the building in the right direction is very important so that it can achieve an optimal climatic response. Buildings that are oriented to face north and south will receive less direct sunlight, while buildings oriented to face east and west will receive more. In hot climates, orienting buildings to minimize exposure to the sun's heat during the hottest parts of the day is preferable. The interaction of the sun with the home also makes it more important to take into consideration as the sun path changes throughout the year. The shape of a building can also impact its exposure to the sun's heat. A compact building form with a smaller surface area will reduce heat gain compared to a building with more external walls and surface area. Designing the house into two stories rather than just one reduces the roof area and eventually reduces the summertime solar heat gain. A two-story house also allows us to play with the volume. We can design cooler zones in the lower part of the house, and so on. Playing with volume and form also determines the spaces that need cooling and heating. Going with more vertical height also helps with cross-ventilation and the natural stack effect, which will help exhaust the hot air. Form and orientation are the most important passive cooling techniques. They fulfill the net zero energy building goals and greatly impact energy efficiency by using the sun and wind to our advantage. Design considerations. Orient the longest side in the north-south direction to minimize direct exposure from the east-west direction. Consider the orientation of the building along the ridge and based on the sun path. Appropriate orientation can reduce the cooling and energy demand inside the building. Keep the building form simple and minimize wall and roof area, compact construction. Provide a high mass design for proper cross ventilation and better insulation. Add overhangs, shading devices, and other elements to protect openings and walls. It will provide shading and decrease the internal surface temperature. Add external architectural features such as water elements, greenery, or land features for shading and evaporative cooling. Design with a higher mass rather than expanding the form. Provide openings wherever it is necessary to reduce direct heat gain. Ventilation. Ventilation is the process of supplying fresh air to an enclosed space and removing stale air. It plays a crucial role in maintaining indoor air quality, regulating temperature, and ensuring the comfort and well-being of occupants. Ventilation is essential in both residential and commercial buildings, as well as industrial settings. Ventilation is a key component of passive cooling strategies, relying on natural air movement to regulate indoor temperatures and improve air quality without the need for mechanical systems. Here's how it works. Cross-ventilation. 
This technique involves the use of strategically placed openings in opposite pressure zones of the building to allow for the flow of cool air in and warm air out. Openings on the opposite side of the building for good cross ventilation are also referred to as inlets and outlets. Inlet from where the cool air enters and outlet from where the warm air exits. The position and size of the inlet and outlet depending on the direction of the wind and its velocity. Ideally, the same size of inlet and outlet is taken into consideration, but playing with size can also create good results. The main purpose of cross ventilation is to provide fresh air and remove hot air to make the inside healthier for the occupants. It filters the level of dust or pollution generated by the mechanical devices used for the artificial air. Good cross ventilation inside a building can be maintained by the better placement of doors, windows, ventilators, arches, and openings. Stack ventilation. This technique relies on the natural tendency or buoyancy of warm air to rise and cool air to fall. Warm air is denser, which is why it rises and floats at the upper level. Cool air is light and it flows below level. Openings are placed at the top and bottom of a building to allow for the natural flow of air through the space. Outdoor breeze air movement creates a push and pull effect because the warm air rises at the top and exits, then is replaced by cooler air. The inlet and outlet should be designed carefully for ease of air circulation. Wind catcher. A wind catcher, also known as a wind tower or venting tower, is a passive ventilation device that has been used for centuries in traditional Middle Eastern and Indian architecture. Wind catchers are designed to capture and direct the flow of air into a building, creating a natural cooling effect. The wind catcher provides a low-carbon ventilation system that provides cool and fresh air without using any mechanical devices. Because of the tunnel or duct thing, the air drawn through it is assumed to be fresh, pollution-free, and clean. To avoid turbulence from the rooftop, the size and height of the wind tower should be precisely calculated. A taller wind catcher is advised for better ventilation and fresh air. The position of the wind catcher also plays a crucial role here. A whole day of air exchange process makes the wind catcher warmer in the evening. Playing with natural ventilation can remove the dependency on mechanical systems, and it will also contribute to the environment. Various types of elements are used for clean, fresh, and natural ventilation, like courtyard effects, stack effects, wind towers, earth air tunnels, atriums, ventilation shafts, solar chimneys, air vents, etc. Design considerations. Design a good layout where cool air enters through an opening and warm air exits through another one. Design openings at different heights so that they can create stack ventilation. Orient buildings between 0 and 30 degrees along the prevailing wind for better air circulation. A sill height of 85% can attract maximum air movement. Good airflow can be achieved by having the same size of openings. The total window wall, WWR, ratio should be 30% of the floor area. Design windows along the breezeways to collect cool air. Casement windows are preferred here. Openings should be kept shut with controlled ventilation in cold regions. In conclusion, passive cooling is an essential aspect of sustainable architecture, offering numerous benefits such as reduced energy consumption, lower utility costs, and improved occupant comfort. By integrating passive cooling strategies into building design and construction, we can create healthier, more resilient, and environmentally friendly living and working spaces for present and future generations. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insights on sustainable design and passive cooling techniques. Thank you.